Hey everyone, and welcome to Big Red Homestead. I'm Josh, that's Caleb, and today we're talking about a Husker win, baby. Nebraska 1 0 <laughs> at home yes, this sir. year. <laughs> and we have a yes, ton sir. to talk about, obviously, headlined by a potential quarterback battle mid season rule. Trying to decide what's going to happen here with Harburg or Jeff Sims heading into Louisiana Tech this week. And of course, Michigan the following week at home. So we're going to be debating what rules should do about the quarterbacks. There's some really interesting opinions there. And of course, breaking down this game, what we learned and some of the big takeaways heading into this second non or I guess now third non-con game of the season. So we have a lot to talk about. Caleb, how are you doing? Man, I'm doing great. Like you said, we're one and oh beat Northern Illinois with a backup QB. Uh, some coaches weren't able to do that, you know, in the past. So I'm happy yeah. to see that we could. Frost. That's a big win for him. Again, things happen. People get hurt. And especially with the O-line we have at the moment, it just, you got to be able to do it. And man, it was exciting. And is this the best defense since the Bo Pelini, Carl Pelini era? I mean, it's very possible. Yeah, we can definitely talk about that for sure, too, when we, like, later in this video. So, yeah, a lot to go into. I mean, first of all, like you said, I think it is important to realize, like, in Frost's first year, we started 0-6 that year. Obviously, the Akron yes. game didn't play. So, you know, who knows what would have happened in that. But you started the year with Colorado. You lose to a non-con team in Troy. Then you go and play Michigan. So, there's a lot of similarities and how the start of that yes. season or that season is with rules. And so just getting a win on the board in a in a pretty dominant overall performance, especially from the defense with how good they looked in this game. So it's going to be fun. So on, let's just, let's start. Let's start hot here. Talk, talk about this offense and why not start where people want to hear. And this is Jeff Sims versus Heinrich Harburg. First of all, what were your impressions of Harburg in this game? And then we can talk about how to compare to Sims and what rules should do forward. Pleasantly surprised <laughs> would be for Heinrich Harburg. Yeah, agreed. In the spring game, he did not look good no. passing the ball. We knew he could. We knew he could he run look and we'd heard flat out. It was horrible. No, no, he could not throw the throw a ball. And we were very nervous because they, they threw a lot of deep balls with him. A lot of sideline to sideline throws in that spring game and nothing was accurate. And uh, his arm strength just didn't look like he had the arm strength that we had kind of been, we heard about for him because he'd been kind of touted as he is, he's a gunslinger. He could throw the ball a good distance. And none of that was the case in the spring game. We knew he could kind of run. We heard through spring camp that they were kind of get him involved because he was an athlete. So that definitely showed up. But him being able to throw the ball, he ended up being graded pretty solid with PFF in like a 71 in the passing grade, which was, again, a great surprise. And they come out in the game, that first throw to Marcus Washington across the middle, and you're like, establishes oh he can pass the ball so a lot of really exciting stuff yeah no i agree i mean overall like he did exactly what he needed to do i mean he didn't make any of yes. the horrible mistakes he did have basically two turnover worthy plays and one was extremely bad the one across the middle that yes. probably would be picked in most other scenarios but it was dropped um so that was a little worrisome but besides that i mean he looked Real nice. The offense moved well. The first half was a little shaky after the strip sack, which was unfortunate and tough stuff from Price yes. Benhart there. But after the strip sack, <laughs> you know, things were a little bit slow. The first drive was immaculate all the way around. Beautiful. But then in the second half, we oh, saw yeah. the offense really start to grind the gears a little bit. We saw Harburg gripping off some runs. We saw a lot better game plan, in my opinion, in the second half. Looks like actually really nice adjustments from Satterfield to find the open space yeah. against this defense who was taking away some of the perimeters and really, and really, I think like almost compressing our offense a little bit too much. So we found ways to open them up a little bit, like with the, the slip screens to Gabe Irvin, getting him involved in the, in the, yeah. in the offense. And as well as the bubble screams like to, to Alex Bullock and some nice plays that turned into really well-developed uh, screen plays. So I really liked how we switched we, at the, at the start, we kind of went with the bigger sets, yeah. um, you know, because we thought we we're going to run the ball and then that wasn't really working. So he goes with more wide receivers, you know, empty sets at times, again, really to get this offense to work. And I really liked, yeah, those switches, they really ended up working for us and we got them, you know, not so much to stack the box, to spread them out a little bit to get that run game going. 
and then open up the pass game as well. Yeah, I really agree. He did a lot of good stuff on the adjustments. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we're getting on Satterfield there. So, uh, not, definitely a nice game from Satterfield overall. But when it comes to Harburg, like like you said, I mean, a nice balance of running ability and passing ability and, and way better than I was expecting, especially in the passing game, considering how bad it was in the spring. Yes. Re respectably accurate, ended up finishing the game 14 for 24. 158 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, obviously. Was it insane upside? So, I mean, they, like, was he game-changing talent ability? I mean, he didn't showcase it in this game, but it was way more efficient and effective than I thought it was going to be. And the offense ran without a hitch with him in the game. So, you know, all of those yeah. things considered, you have and to be impressed. Those, yeah, and you know, I think for a lot of the Hus Husker fans out there, it's he didn't have the big mistakes that we'd seen from Sims. Right, well, but yeah. he did throw the, the brain one dead mistakes, right? Play. Yes. We, we had no dropped snaps and uh, a miscue on a handoff. Again, that's the things that just can't happen. Or red zone so, INTs. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, he had one pick worthy play for sure and probably two that you can live with a pick, but you can't live with dropped snaps and, you know, those, right. those free fumbles. So that was nice to see. And yeah, I mean, I was impressed. He did a really good job of gathering the troops and again, moving the ball down the field and not a lot of penalties from our team either. Just also, you know, there was miscues on, you know, with Sims on just kind of the timing of when guys were in motion on those snaps. That wasn't really a thing that we saw with Harburg either. No close calls where we saw a few with Sims on that as well. Like another thing that we mentioned last week was that Sims was one of seven power five quarterbacks not to have a big time throw where Harburg did end up having two in this game. So another, another situation where you're like, OK, you know, at least there's some upside here with Harburg and something that we had not seen with Jeff Sims so far. Obviously, again, when it comes to Sims versus Harburg, it's tough with Sims. I mean, he was playing two power five teams on the road where now you get Harburg in the season opener at home against a, a much softer team overall, much easier team. So like, for example, I mean, he was pressured. Harburg was pressured on 20.7 percent of his snaps where Sims against Colorado was pressured on 44.4% of his snaps and 375 against Minnesota. So significantly more pressure. More. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Significantly more pressure um, with Sims in the game there. And again, this was also a game where the offensive line had an incredibly good game and probably like Turner Corcoran's best pass blocking game of his career in this game as well. So you got to give him his roses when he deserves them. And so shout out... Turner Corcoran for making it happen in this game. Yeah, it's great to see him do well. We need it. And, you know, our O-line has been doing better things under rule in general. Uh, it is nice not to have to, you know, say, what were you doing? Why did you have a 0.0, .0 pass grade? <laughs> uh, I'd way rather be like, nice job, good game, and we can move on. So please continue this, Turner. I would, it would be it just it help everybody's mental i think uh yeah if that would just i mean it case. is good to see the offensive line start and may maybe this is the beginning of something you know and if that's the case yeah. then you know we weren't doing this against the bad teams in the past so i mean no that's, at that's least the thing yeah, our offensive line yeah they've lo they looked bad even against the bad teams and this team again they had rule talked about it they had a solid d line that had been the teeth of their defense and uh we were able to handle that pretty well and we yeah. could see that they were solid again in the run stop in the first half. They did a lot of good things against us. Uh, but, you know, as the game progressed and went on, we wore them down. And, you know, again, Harburg, dude, just, I mean, he almost had offensive <laughs> targeting. He was, yeah, he no. was aggressive. Dude, when so. you, yeah, I don't, when you, that's the thing, homie. <laughs> like, if you're going to run the ball, bro, like, you can't be asked to die. Like, it's a, he's going to tear a shoulder or get concussed if he keeps running like this. I mean, we literally saw Anthony Richardson in the game. Like he got he, like yesterday in the NFL, he got hurt because of the same way, like just running way too aggressively. So it's like at some point, you know, you got to calm down a little bit and slide a little bit. But, you know, hey, that's what young quarterbacks like to do. So this was the largest vic margin of victory win since the Northwestern blowout in 2021, where we won 56 to seven. You know, after that, we didn't win another game the rest of the season. So let's hope that doesn't happen this time around. But nah, the, <laughs> the like there is a lot of positives to build off of in a game like this, especially on the offensive side where we needed to see some momentum. And we finally saw that, especially in the second half, establishing the run. And we saw Gabe Irvin get involved in the pass game. So just a lot to like. And Anthony Grant. That was such a good throw. Well. That was that was the Harburg moment. I think for me was that toss to Gabe Irvin. Mm. The, just the, that float pass that he had. I mean, that was really impressive. Great timing. And 
Yeah, I mean, that was my, that was like my, oh, like Harburg could be the guy with a throw like that. Um, you know, that was something we hadn't seen. Like, a, I mean, it was just a great touch pass. That was something we haven't seen from Sims. Both of them had kind of thrown the intermediate passes that looked solid. Um, you know, I do think that Harburg was quicker on the decision making, just more decisive uh, in, yeah. in the moment of just picking the guy and going with him than than Sims was at times. Both of them, we haven't seen like an amazing deep ball from. Like, no. I think that's more goes to our wide receivers though than them. Like, I think personally, right. that I don't think it's a knock on either one of them. Like, they've both thrown in the area of guys on a deep ball, but I don't think our, I'm just, it's it's a bummer our wide receivers don't look that good. Besides Marcus Washington, uh, our wide receivers just don't look that great. No, for sure. This and, is uh, it's looking like one of the worst receiving cores. I mean, in a long, long time. I'm like, I was thinking back yeah. on this. I'm like, when have we had a less dynamic receiving core than this? And I mean, I couldn't think of a year in the, at least in the last 15 where that was the case. So it's definitely not good yeah. right now. Yeah, I mean, Marcus Washington, while he's good, he's not really like a league guy. We've usually had some guy who's at least a fringe league type of player. I'm really hoping that those, the freshmen, that uh, Jalen Lloyd and Malachi Coleman can yeah. continue to turn it around because, or, you know, to progress because we're going to need them, I think, if we want to see like a bigger jump into winning more games. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, like, I, like the only year that came to mind for me was like maybe like, 2009 or something like that when you had like Niles Paul but almost nobody else but even then Niles Paul went to the NFL and had a long career in the NFL as a tight end so it's like yeah you know I mean even then you still had the NFL guys there so right now it feels real bad so I'm not I'm not exactly sure that's the big question mark move forward we need a guy to emerge really badly yes the Wandale type of emergence here at some point there so with that said with comes to quarterback debate I mean where are you at for next week what do you think rules gonna do versus what do you think he should do hmm I think I think what he should do, in my opinion, is start Harburg. He won you the game. I know it. you're right. It is a lesser opponent, but I think he's earned the ability to give it a shot. He did enough where you can put him out on the field. I'm just worried by the verbiage that, you know, Matt Rule used of, you know, he did his job and what was expected of, of him and like stuff like that, where it sounds like, you know, oh, he's still right. the backup. In, uh, like, in I Matt can't Rule's speak to eyes. Justin's health right now and all those things. Like, yeah, so yeah. That's... So, you know, I'm worried that you know that that's but the what's, case. What's, what's, what's your that... reasoning though? Why would you start Harburg? Matt Rule himself said that he wasn't planning on throwing the ball that much with Harburg, but just how the game went, they had to have him open it up, and I think he proved that he was good enough to to start and play and, and be in the, the big, offense I mean, the big looks, 10 is obviously what rule is looking forward to right now it's yes the, who gives us the best chance to win against northwestern against purdue against illinois and you gave jeff sims you know two games why not give harburg a couple as well you know a couple as well at this point i think this is an open quarterback battle again and you it is and so then now this was harburg's tryout which was a very good tryout i mean zero turnovers exactly what you need to do and showed some upside, way more upside than I thought that he had as a player, again, dating back to the spring game and what we had seen from him on the field last year as well, just trash. So this year, completely different player. Shout out the coaching staff, because I think that he, obviously he's a different player than he used to be. So then you head into this upcoming week with Jeff Sims. In my opinion, this is his tryout now. He has to live up to Harburg's standard. And if he doesn't, then you go into Michigan with Harburg as a starter. You know, that's, how much does that's Jeff, a tough game. How much does Jeff Sims get to play, like, if it's not going well? Like, how, how soon do you pull him? I mean, it depends how bad it is. Like, if he, if he has, like, two turnovers in the first two drives, then, all right, well, then you're done. If it's, like, uh, well, because, I mean, Harburg had the strip sack, so you can, you're at least allowed a strip sack. And then you have to well, see sure. how well I mean, you yeah, play. If, if our offensive line blows it, that's not on Jeff Sims. Right. Uh, so it, that's, it comes down yeah. to what Jeff does. I mean, if Jeff looks like he's horrible in the first half, then, then you put Harburg in, let him get some momentum going into Michigan. Uh, so in my opinion, this at least gives you the chance to settle the debate. Because then you're, the, the problem is, is like if Harburg looks, I mean, he's probably going to look fine against Louisiana Tech. But then if he comes out and plays horrible against Michigan, and you're like, okay, well, it was Michigan, so of course he played horrible. But then he comes out and doesn't look good against Northwestern. So now you have like a you're now you're back to having a quarterback debate again. Where in theory here, if Sims looks terrible against Louisiana Tech, 
then you could end the quarterback debate before it even gets started, essentially. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's the luxury of it's a La Tech team, but I just, I don't want Harburg to have to come in here and pitch, you know, and be a relief pitcher if the game's going south because, again, we need every single win. And, you know, I think that this is, again, also, like with the, the Minnesota game and, and other games, it's like, man, it, it's a bummer that it, it literally took Sims going down um, to to really make it a hard but it's week. just hard to know. I mean, again, Harburg, the, the turnover worthy plays, they could have turned into picks against Minnesota. There's no Tyler Newbin on, on Northern sure. Illinois. For sure. So it's like there are those factors where it's like, you know, you just don't know. I mean, it's you, it's very reasonable to assume that Jeff Sims comes out and plays great in this game. Just like Harburg did. His start stop speed is obviously faster than Harburg. Harburg is definitely more of a bruiser. Where you no, know, again, I think Sims has plenty of upside. It's just the we can't those mistakes of turnovers that are unforced by the defense. No, for sure. I mean, just, the question is, is that have. are those so, brain dead plays going to keep happening in the big moments? You know, yeah. And essentially, if if one more happens again, rest of the season, you almost have to bench him. So I get why people yeah. don't want to walk on those eggshells anymore. But I mean, right now, who do you think gives us the best chance to win the most games rest of the season? Personally, I think it's Harburg. It, I'd rather have a game manager that doesn't turn the ball over and has our offense running smoothly and, you know, gets the running backs, the weapons. And he's enough of a threat on with his legs where he's a weapon in himself. I know he's not quite as much of a weapon as Sims with his right. legs, but he's not just a pocket passer. And we definitely need... We'd need the QB to be a dual threat just with the poor wide receiver core that we have at the moment. Um, and he also has a good connection with Fedoni, which I think is important That's as well. True. Because as roommates, I think that gives us upside. I mean, Fedoni's looked unlocked with Yeah, he's emerging. Harper. He's emerging. What do you think? It's tough for me. I mean, obviously, again, completely blew away my expectations. I, I do have to rethink where I'm at with it. Um, because going into the week, I would have for sure said Sims. So now at this point, it's it's like a 50-50. And that's why I want to see Sims against Louisiana Tech mm. and see what he's capable of in a game at home with less pressure. Um, obviously, to him, there'd still be a lot of pressure because he'd be playing for his job. So and that's why I think that's if his brain pressure, turns right? off, if his brain turns off, it's because there's still he's putting pressure on himself and then we'll see it. If not, yeah. then he's going to dominate and look great. And then now, you know, I'm interested to see Sims again at home rest of season against like Michigan or against Northwestern. So that's why I, I lean Sims like 52 to 48% or something like basically 51, 49. I would start Sims and play them on basically eggshells, which isn't ideal. I can see the argument though, to start Harburg and just put confidence in your uh, guy yeah, and then what, let it that's run. That's what I think. You know, the coaches, you know, they pick the guys who work hard are going to play. So, and, um, you know, both of the QBs have obviously this year, but yeah, I mean, I think I think it'll be Sims though. I think they're going to be more on your your thought process. Try of, out. Yep. Let's let's give him one last chance, and yeah. this is probably the last chance we you know we can. Right. So with that said, I mean, maybe we can transition to the defense and just talk about some of the playmakers here. I mean, the, the, we absolutely stuffed them this game. I mean, there was nothing there for Northwestern. I mean, they only, the starters basically held Northwestern essentially to a shutout. I mean, the only points up until the end of the game, the last drive against the backups was the three points, which came off of a turnover, the strip sack inside the 10 yard line. So it's like this defense played lights out. Absolutely insane. Lombardi had 73 yards passing 11 for 28. Uh, just absolutely stuffed. And they only averaged 1.2 yards per rush. Uh, and Ontario Brown averaged two yards per rush. Gavin averaged 3.5 on his four carries. So they were getting smoked. What are your thoughts on his defense and who stood out to you? Man, it was just so awesome. Yeah, obviously the, the Javin Wright play was so awesome. Yeah. Athletic. And then the Qu the Quentin Newsome pick too was exciting as well. And Omar Brown was in position for that. Dude, yeah. In the, in the same light. Like this defense, again, people wanted to compare... You know, they're like, oh, you know, Frost 2019 defense, you know, where we went three and nine. They're like, oh, that was good. And it's like, you forget some of those games where it's in this similar situation where we have, we're playing bad teams and still lose. Like that was like the Michigan State where you held them to no, to no first downs in the where second it was half. 23. Yeah. yeah 23, I mean, 20 Oklahoma, overtime. Oklahoma, we knew was bad. Um, 
right? Yeah, Purdue still, I mean, Minnesota still dropped 30 on you. Purdue yeah. dropped 28. Like, um, yeah, meantime, Wisconsin 35, yeah. Iowa 28. So, yeah, there yeah, were still so, points there. Well, well, you know, in the same line, and we'll like see what happens. Minnesota. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, obviously, there's still time. The jury's still out, but this looks as good of the defense that we've had since the Bo Pelini era. How much again, do I we just, love Tony White? So much. He, again, I think the, the Shenander philosophy was just so frustrating to watch at times too with just on so allowing soft, soft stuff and, co- and coverage and luckily we had some playmakers but this it's like our this our whole is greater than the sum of our parts which yeah. I did not feel that way at all in the Frost era like, yeah we have it and man like we're, we we drop eight when we're in the red zone like it's we, crazy we, man we do tons of different things. We give them tons of different looks. The, the, We're getting it's so sacks. fun to watch. We have not gotten sacks like this. No. Like, in, like at all in the Frost era, at all in the Mike Riley era, we are we are still getting tons of sacks. We had four this game. Like, and we're getting QB pressures. And again, this was a defense where it's like, man, who do we have as weapons? And they have, they have used tons of guys we didn't see. Right. They tried them out. New guys have fit in the system. Guys that have been here before. And again, in, in a game where we needed the defense to play up to that standard, they did. Like, again, the Minnesota game, it was exciting. They played good enough to win in the Colorado game the first half they did. That's the best QB we'll see all season. I mean, we're currently like, uh, eighth in yards, opponents' yards per play. And again, that's playing against two power five teams. Not many teams in the country have done that. Like, with And we played against Colorado, who's had, again, one of the best QBs in the nation. Oh, yeah. I mean... And then you you take into account like our sack percentage and sacks per game. I mean, it's it's insane right now. Right now we're sixth in the country in sacks per game. I mean, our run defense looks absolutely amazing. I mean, Nash Hubmacher yeah, and, and his emergence right now and, and the guys up front just look great. Yeah, just some of the, again, the transformation in a lot of these guys that Newsom's stepped up. He's he's taken an extra step this season. And yeah, I mean, yeah, Nash, who, who knew? And I, at times, like Ty Robinson's looked okay. Like guys that have, you know, that have not been great. Like they've been able to turn it around and have a right. good season. And that's just, again, that shows coaching. They developed these guys in the off season and we can really see it on defense. And again, even in the O-line, like they've developed these guys where it's not as bad as it was before. I mean, this is huge strides in one year with these guys. And I know we're only three games in, but even in the other games where, you know, uh, we saw Husker fans tilting, we're like, it's not that bad. And, uh, you know, we, we have lots of opportunities to win games. I've seen now, I, I put out a poll of, you know, how many games the Huskers going to win this season. So now people, again, are kind of thinking that we could make a bowl game. And I think oh. that, again, w- yes, uh, with six wins being the most voted oh on how many wins my, we get this really? season. So I'm wow, glad to Husker see the Huskers are the, positive the, again, the, folks. We, we are. Yeah, it's been a roller Crazy coaster. Crazy what emotions. a win does. And I get it. Yeah, I get it on the Colorado. Colorado was very frustrating and they're, they're still frustrating. Um, so I understand that that was yeah. part of part of it. But I, I'm really positive on so much of the change in our team. And again, yeah, the defensive philosophy of Tony White and just all the stuff that he throws out this three, 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 five, it just enables so many fun. diverse blitzing packages. It's beautiful. And and it, fits, it looks, fits our team so well because we just so well. We didn't quite have the athletes, no, but or the schematically can co- and so, but schematically it can cover it with guys that aren't tall enough and in, to fit. Yeah, you three know, three five don't require edge rushers. Three you need the three, three big old polar bears up there, and that's exactly what we have. We have, <laughs> so. and so that fit well as well. So it really fit the guys and scheme we have. Yeah, and, and really maximize the talent. Deshaun Singleton, I think, is a guy that you know there'll be a, you know he's a great fit, and these other guys. But imagine when. We have even more athletes who are, you know, when who play this not even back yet. They're just heads up. Yeah, Buford, like there's still upside in this team. Keeps getting better. We see MJ Sherman kind of emerge this game a little bit, getting yeah. a sack. David Wright and, well and Mackay Bayer. I mean, yeah, the, the guys they emerging better. They when, have, have, when was the last time we had so many guys emerge at the same time? Like, it, yeah. this definitely goes to show this coaching on defense is yeah. impressive. Yeah, I mean, again, again third it, it in the country in yards per game, in opponents rushing yards per game, and and uh, fifth in the country in opponents yards per rush attempt right now. Again, I liked that we got the turnovers that we really hadn't been getting last game. That's something that we can continue to build on because we'll need that. We'll need the field flips. We had a great a great punt 
where uh, yeah. Phelan Sanford MVP. caught it at like the two yard line. You know, our special teams goat, our spring game MVP every season. This coaching staff, if they like you in a certain spot or position uh, and they think you're a weapon in this setting, they will play you. And we saw that even the first game right. with Harburg and Jalen Lloyd and, you know, Tommy Hill. Like if they think that you're an advantage or a piece that they can use in this specific setting, they do it. And right. so that just also goes to shout out the, the data that they're collecting on these guys to know in these positions, they're good here, they're good here, they're good here. And again, just a very big difference in philosophy and I think work put in in the coaching staff. Yeah, so yeah. again, all things that you love Len to see. Hart got hurt in like right at the beginning of the game. He only played six snaps and then got hurt. So that was unfortunate. So we'll have to get more updates on that. Because then Prince Will came in yes. and played like 23 snaps in this game. And looked pretty good. So another true freshman coming in, making plays. So, and we saw like Riley Van Poppel. I mean, these this defensive line class is shaping up to be an all timer if these guys end up working out like, like yeah. they're looking so far as true freshmen on the defensive line. And yeah, dude, they're keeping everybody happy as well. Like we're playing so many guys like in the Frost era. Like there was, it was our bench felt so Dead. thin because yeah, because yeah, nobody else was playing. Here it's just like guys are rotating in getting snaps they're getting more again they're collecting data on who's it does good. feel like you're yeah. actually building a program right now which is that's yes. that feels good it does feel like it does feel like we're seeing evidence like, of oh, that is this what it feels forward. like to build a program <laughs> like what is no it's impossible yeah so i'm i'm excited it's yeah it's looking good for the future guys yeah crazy what and one win will do it is crazy, <laughs> isn't it? Suddenly we're winning the Natty this year, boys. So we appreciate Let's it. Let's go. Obviously, drop your comments down below and want to see who you guys think are the biggest breakouts and who's going to start this week against Louisiana Tech. Oh, of course, want to see that yes. for sure. And then, yes, for, you know, make sure you join the Patreon for, you know, <laughs> PFF grades. I forgot to, we didn't even say, Javin Wright got a 90. He got a 90 on PFF grades. That yeah. is, I can't remember the last time that's happened. So if you want to see us talk and review about PFF grades, make sure to go on the Patreon, check us out, and film reviews as well. I, yes. I had to mention it. I mean, when's the last time we had a 90 Yeah, had to like Jojo Doman uh, at some point. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, that's, 100%. That's so, NFL anyway, level. we that's appreciate level you guys for watching. But as always, I'm Josh. That's Caleb. This has been Big Red Homestead. And guys, we'll see you next time. Go, go Big, Big Red! Red.